Hey doctor, how do you know the difference between an adult with type 1 diabetes versus an adult with type 2 diabetes? Well, I just look at them and then I know. <clears throat> Wrong. But that is still how doctors and mainstream society and even those of us with diabetes think about these two types of diabetes. We've all been taught to believe that young skinny people get type 1 diabetes while older people living with obesity get type 2. But experts in diabetes research have discovered a few things about type 1 and type 2 diabetes that might really surprise you. And actually it might make some people mad because type 1s hate being confused with type 2s. But you gotta hear this. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. We didn't cause it. We couldn't prevent it. Yada, yada, yada. In other words, please stop asking us if we got type 1 because we ate too many donuts. Meanwhile, type 2 diabetes is a metabolic disorder, which does involve lifestyle habits like what you eat and how much you exercise. But it's not that simple. And guess what? Eating donuts did not cause type 2 diabetes either. There's so much research that proves that a person's genetics play a huge role in their risk of developing type 2, even if they eat healthy foods and exercise. But mainstream society loves to blame it on the donuts. That's really not fair. And actually, it's also just not nice. There's so much more science here that people don't know. Experts at the Diabetes Research Institute have been studying type 1 diabetes for over 50 years with the primary goal of preventing type 1 and developing a cure. Actually, the entire organization was started by a group of parents with children who had type 1 diabetes in the 1970s. Here's a look at what those experts at DRI have uncovered in recent research about the similarities between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Okay, but first you've got to meet Dr. Matthias von Herreth, the scientific director at the Diabetes Research Institute. Oh, but Dr. von Herreth does not like wearing that white coat. And actually, he'd prefer that we call him Matthias. Also, he can play a whole bunch of instruments. actually believes that the line between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is more blurry than we think. And all people with diabetes would benefit if research focused more on what they have in common instead of arguing about why they're so different. Okay, so this brilliant fella was actually involved in many of the developments and advancements that you see in diabetes research today. What Matthias and his colleagues at the Diabetes Research Institute have discovered about the similarities between type 1 and type 2 actually really surprised me. Strangely enough, Matthias says that Harry Potter can help us understand this. So we already know that in type 1 diabetes, the immune system is attacking the cells that produce insulin, attacking things that it shouldn't be attacking. But there's more to it than that. It's not just our immune system's fault. Matthias said that the beta cells, which are the cells in your pancreas that produce insulin, should actually be wearing like these invisible cloaks, kind of like Harry Potter's invisible cloak that, you know, he uses to sneak around Hogwarts. Our beta cells should actually be invisible to our immune system. They should be protected by this invisible magic cloak. But for some reason, those beta cells remove their magic cloak and make themselves visible to your immune system. This is what happens in people with type 1 diabetes. And we don't talk about this. Nobody ever told me this. The immune system is like, whoa, attack, attack, attack. So we can't put all the blame on the immune system. The beta cells were like basically setting themselves up to be attacked by taking off their invisible cloak. Beta cells? contribute to their own demise. Understanding this whole invisible cloak thing matters. It means that developing a cure for type 1 diabetes isn't just about suppressing the immune system or trying to sneak around the immune system. It's also about hiding the beta cells, convincing those beta cells to put their invisible cloak back on. Okay, so what about type 2 diabetes? What does this have to do with type 2? We already know that in type 2 diabetes, the immune system isn't really attacking and destroying insulin producing cells the way it does in type 1. But the beta cells in a small percentage of people with type 2 diabetes do kind of gradually lose their fancy Harry Potter invisibility cloak powers. Basically, those beta cells get really stressed out from increasing insulin resistance, which leads to higher levels of body fat. The cells are tired and their fancy cloak powers just kind of 
fizzle out. Matias says that in approximately three to 8% of people with type two diabetes, the immune system starts to notice those insulin producing cells. Mainstream media likes to think that type two diabetes is all about insulin resistance. But many people with type 2 diabetes actually produce less and less insulin over time. The research shows that in some people with type 2, the immune system is attacking and destroying the cells that produce insulin. And it means that their ability to produce enough insulin is going to decline more quickly than it will in other type 2s. So things like being overweight or obese can actually increase that autoimmune attack because it puts more stress on the cells that produce insulin. But this occurs in both type one and type two. And no, once this has happened, it cannot simply be reversed with lots of broccoli and lots of jogging, but we could probably all benefit from eating more broccoli. All right, so all of this means that type one and type two actually overlap more than we think. We cannot make assumptions about a person's type of diabetes just because they are young and skinny or older and overweight. Age and weight should not determine a person's diabetes diagnosis or their treatment plan anymore. So instead, he thinks we should be looking at the causes of a person's diabetes. Insulin resistance, autoimmunity, and metabolic syndrome concerns like obesity and high cholesterol. Because any combination of these factors can affect both types of diabetes. So that would also change how we treat type 1 and type 2 diabetes because some type ones would benefit from medications developed for type two diabetes and vice versa. Okay, but here are a few more things that these two types of diabetes have in common. Many type ones struggle with insulin resistance, constant hunger, and weight gain, frustrating weight gain that's so hard to fight against. Many type twos struggle with simply producing enough insulin. Over 60% of type ones are either overweight or obese. 60%. About 40% of type 2s cannot reverse the condition simply by losing weight, eating more broccoli, and exercising more. Also, more and more children with type 1 are experiencing higher levels of insulin resistance. Did you know there are actually five other hormones that people with type 1 diabetes struggle to produce properly? And those hormones regulate things like your appetite, telling your brain that you're full after eating, your sensitivity to insulin, and how much sugar your liver is producing all day long. Many type ones struggle with weight gain because we're actually producing too much sugar. This means we need extra insulin and that extra insulin is gonna take the extra sugar and store it as body fat. Oh, and let's add constant hunger to this mess. That makes it really easy to manage your weight. Meanwhile, type twos are producing less and less insulin over time. And some people who've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes actually have type 1. They were misdiagnosed because so many doctors today still think that type 1 only develops in children. They see an overweight adult with high blood sugars and they just assume it's type 2. Instead, they should be testing for autoantibodies and testing your C-peptide level to confirm your diagnosis because more than half of new cases of type 1 diabetes actually develop in adults. But that's a whole other mess. If you live with type 1 diabetes, there should be no shame in needing support from other medications besides insulin. And there shouldn't be any shame in type 2 diabetes for needing any medication at all. In his work at the Diabetes Research Institute, Matthias is on a mission. He is trying to raise more awareness of these overlapping issues that both types of diabetes Space. We can learn so much about type 1 diabetes from studying type 2 diabetes and vice versa. All right, there you have it. We got to work together on this. It doesn't need to be type 1 versus type 2. We got to support each other because any person living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes deserves a big old high five. No type of diabetes is easy. And the people living with any type of diabetes deserve support, respect, and compassion. And hey, wait, Matthias and the DRI and everybody who works there, thank you for the decades of effort and research and hours and energy that you have put into trying to improve life for those of us with type 1 diabetes. I can't speak for everybody, but I am grateful. You know what? I have so many amazing friends with type 1 and so many amazing friends with type 2, 
and we need researchers. We need this work that you're doing. So please keep going. We are grateful. Thank mm -hmm. you.